In this presentation, what we are going to do is test, check the assumption of normality. So we're going to test to see if these numeric variables are normally distributed. That is to say, is the population that the sample is drawn from, can we say that population is normally distributed? So x1 is a sample from a population, x2 is a sample from some population, and so on. So uh, we're going to check all five here. So the first thing we can do is go up to stat. Okay, and there's a really, I really love this. The uh, first off, go to basic statistics and go to graphical summary. Uh, let's click on all of them there. Okay. Oh, let's try that again. What am I doing? Select, 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 and select. What am I missing? X3 and X5. Select and select okay there we go now the poll there we go five of these graphical summary reports have come up okay now what we're going to do here is look at them one by one okay so the first one here is there are two things we're looking at <clears throat> the first thing here is the um histogram and what we're looking at here is to see is does this this is the histogram here but this red line that's sort of superimposed above it this is a bell curve and really the sort of what we have to sort of determine is the bell curve um, uh, aligning pretty uh, okay it, it, how, how is the alignment between the bell curve that red line and the histogram underneath it and it actually seems pretty good there, such that the, I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it does actually sort of have, give you a rough idea about where things go. So if the, if that is the case, we sort of like, that reinforces the assumption that the data set is normally distributed. Now, looking up here in the top right, we have the Anderson Darling test. Okay. So what we're going to do here is look at the p-value specifically. And the p-value here is 0.862. Now, 0.862 is above our threshold of 5%. For this uh, series of uh, videos, I'm going to use a threshold of 5% mostly, or 0 0.05. And if a p-value is greater than 0 0.05, we say it's not significant, or we don't have a significant result, and we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So this gets us into the question of what hypothesis testing is about very early. In a lot of these procedures, in the Anderson-Darling test, we sort of, the null hypothesis is that the data set, so essentially the population from which the data is drawn is normally normally distributed. The alternative hypothesis is that the data, the population from which the sample is drawn, the data set, the, data, the, under, the overall data, that population is not normally normally distributed. Now, the way to interpret this test is, really, is there enough evidence to say that the data set is not normally, normally distributed? So that's the key question we're sort of asking here. Is, the, is there enough evidence to say that the data set is not normally, normally distributed? And how we do that is we would judge the p-value there. So if this p-value is a very... Um, low number like less than 0 0.05 then we reject the null hypothesis we say that um, if we again if we reject the null hypothesis we say that there is sufficient evidence to say that the population is not normally distributed and in this case we don't have that case don't we don't have that I've accidentally moved it there and uh, so again we don't have enough evidence to say that the data set is not normally distributed this uh, the, the red line here corresponds with the curve. Essentially what I'm saying is um, that X1 seems to be normally distributed. We, we, the normal distribution assumption is valid here. So let's go for X2 now, just to close that down, cancel that. And we'll see if we can get X2 here up now. Um, here, now, um, now just remember it has to be you know, this is a the this is actually a sort of tough one here for this uh, red line. It does it's not too bad, but I don't see, uh, this curve is not sort of aligned in the middle. Okay, which is I don't like that, but it's not a it's not it doesn't go against this yet. So the red line is a bit this this the the red line here uh, superimposed on the histogram is a bit inconclusive 
but in this case when you don't see both ends of the curve you should be immediately be, be, be a bit suspicious okay so let's look at the Anderson Darling test so we're again we're looking at the p-value there minus 0 0.005 less than 0 0.005 now just an important remark uh, 0 0.5 and not is our threshold this the, what we have here is a p-value less than 0 0.005 okay that's two zeros our threshold has one zero after the decimal place this has two zeros after the decimal place this is a much smaller number just watch out for those uh, extra zeros it is uh, essentially this p-value is small and that means that there is enough evidence to reject uh, the hypothesis that the data set is normally normally distributed essentially there's enough evidence to say that the data set is not normally normally distributed so in this case we're going to say x2 is not normally normally distributed so x1 was normal x2 is not normal normally distributed okay let's go on to x3 let's see here again something that's well, x4 let's yeah let's stick with x4 and go back to x3 something similar here essentially we don't see both ends of the uh, bell curve, that red line, not that it's a major issue. Another thing is that it doesn't really match up with the red line, okay? It's not, that's the, 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 the histogram, the blue histogram underneath doesn't really match up that well with the red line. It's, it doesn't give you the same impression as the red line, okay? So based on that, we're going to say to say not normally normally distributed. The p-value here again, zero less than 0 0.05. Okay, that means we reject the null hypothesis. There is sufficient evidence to say that the data set is not normally distributed. Okay, so X4 is also not normally distributed. Close that down. Let's go looking for X3. Yep. Now here we see both ends of the. Um, I mean that's not a key, uh, that's a sort of useful, but it's not how we interpret it. But it's still sort of useful. Can you see both ends of the bell curve? Um, so it, in this case, it, the red line does sort of match up with the histogram. The red line does sort of follow the peaks, really, of the blue uh, columns. So good sign there to sort of say that this data set is normally normally distributed. Also, we look at the p-value here. We get a large p-value there. So if the p-value is large, that's not a significant result. Not significant means we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Essentially, in this case, we're saying that there's not enough evidence to say that this data set is not normally distributed. Okay, that's the proper interpretation. So anyway, what I mean is for X3, normal and normal. Pretty good assumptions there. Uh, support for that assumption there. Close that down. Finally, X5. Those bad signs. We can't see the over the ends of the histogram of uh, the the red line. You know. So we should, that should be nicely in the middle, but it's not, it's sort of cut off there at one end, that's a bad sign. Uh, it doesn't really, it's it's not really how we, uh, it, the, the red, red line is a bit inconclusive in terms of how well it matches up with the blue, um, with the blue columns, so mm, not great there. So I, that's a little bit inconclusive, but uh, leading me to suspect no. Looking over here at the Anderson Darling, uh, less than 0 0.05 or 005, and so that's a really small number there. You actually, when they get a really, really small number, it just prints that out, less than 0 0.05. And if you do get something like that, you reject the null hypothesis. So we reject the null hypothesis. There's not enough evidence to say that the data set is, or there's enough evidence to say that the data set is not normally distributed. So X5, not normally distributed. So, uh, I think we had two not normally, or two or three not normally distributed, I can't remember. Anyway, there's another way of looking at this here, and what we're going to do now is go down to Stat, Basic Statistics. So, basically, we're looking there at the graphical summary, but also down here is the normality test. Let's click on that. I'll just do it for X1 this time. Uh, it, there's other tests here, like for the Anderson Darling, the Ryan Joyner, and the Kalmogorov Smirnoff test. Uh, let's see if we can do one or the other. Well, we'll, just, we'll stick with a different one here, the uh, the Ryan Joyner test. And we'll just try for X1. Click OK. There we go. So what we have here is a QQ plot, or a, prob a probability plot of X1. Essentially well, how we interpret this, this is a different way of looking at the uh, plot. Also at the side you might notice that we have, I'll see if I can make this a little bit bigger. 
you might notice that we have a, a test statistic and a p-value there. So this is the normality test. This value here is indicates is uh, it's greater than 0 0.100. That means it's not significant. Okay, so uh, not significant. Fail to reject the null hypothesis. Not enough evidence to say that the data set is not normally distributed. Now let's look at the plot here. Essentially, the plot works on the basis that if these dots follow the red line you can say that the underlying data set is normally normally distributed. You're allowed to have a few non uh normally or, or a few points that like uh, uh are a little bit away from the line, but if most of the line uh, points follow the line, that's a free, really good indication that the the data set is normally normally distributed that it's a valid assumption. So, okay. Uh, click no there. Let's see what do we get here in the session window. I think we get might get a little bit of output. Not really. Um, let's try that again for one of the other procedures here, or one of the other data sets. So again, we go to stat, basic statistics, normality test down the bottom. Click on that. Let's do it for X2, which was not normally normally distributed. Select that. We can only do one at a time. Let's do the Kolmogorov Smirnoff test. Okay. Click OK. There we go. Now, here we have a really small p value for the Kolmogorov Smirnoff test. That means we reject the null hypothesis. There is enough evidence to say that the data set is not normally, normally distributed. Now, I think the key thing here is actually I want you to look at the points there. Does that do, do do those points match up with the red line? Not a bit of it. Okay. They do not match up with the red, uh, red line. So we would say that this data set is not normally distributed. Okay. Okay, this population the population for which the sample is drawn is not norm, normally distributed. Okay. We're going to close that down there now. And uh, one more, we'll just try one more just to sort of have a look at this. We had the normality test. Let's pick X5 this time, select that. And I think we'll go back to the Anderson Darling test. We've seen this one before. Again, the points on the line do not match up, or the points do not match up with the line. In that case, not normally distributed. Again, we also get that really low p value. The really low p value means less than 0 0.005. We reject the null hypothesis, enough evidence to say that the data set is not normally distributed. Okay, that's a wrap. We'll wrap that up. 12 minutes, wow.